Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Midwest Regional checking in team number well, 111 and 112, Wild Sting and plus one team Wild Sting here at the Midwest Regional Wild Sting Hall of Fame team, uh, of course, and now they have a plus one team from last year coming in. We're going to actually showcase both these robots in this video here, talking about some really cool features, capabilities, and functions. Take a look at both of these robots and what they have to bring. Uh, 111 here, a very cool design, carbon fiber coming in. 112 here, very efficient as they go through as well, too. So I can't wait to talk both about 111 and 112 coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So, Kevin, let's start off on the uh, gripper uh, and the arm here that you have. 111 has built a gorgeous robot this year. We've seen a lot on your Chief Delphi blogs uh, showcasing this whole design process here. So I'd love to hear more about how did you come up with this design, how it's working out for you here on practice day as we're filming this. And also, were there any other designs you had in mind looking at the Charged Up Challenge? There were a couple other designs, but they quickly got, they, they didn't turn out so well. So we turned this one, we decided on pretty quickly through prototyping. It's able to do both cubes tip cones and upright cones. Or, yep. So for, cu for cubes, it just grabs it and spits it in. For, for tip cones, it tips it up and it gets hit by the top poly belt and sucked in. And for upright cones, the front tip, the top of the cone gets hit by the rollers and also gets pushed in. In addition, due to the additional design constraint for this gripper, for our particular robot was that because our arm can go off of both the front and the back, we wanted our gripper to be able to intake from both sides as well. So, so we made the gripper vertically symmetric, and because it's vertically symmetric, it can go from both sides. When you're looking at it from a strategy-wise on here, uh, it looks like you're just able to pick up from practically anywhere. Was that kind of like number one where you're looking at game strategy, or did you have any other ideas like maybe we're only going to pick up from the station or anything like that? It wasn't a requirement for us to do absolutely every position, but the way it turned out was that we could do tip cones, upright cones, cubes, off the shelf, all of it. Uh, a few other teams that we've interviewed here, when they when we look at their like their claw, their intake area, some of them have like kind of two positions, like one is for the cubes to come in and they have like that lower bar uh, for yeah. cones sort of thing. You were an all-in-one design here. Uh, how'd you come up with that solution? Um, it is an all-in-one design, but it does still have multiple positions. It's got a coat, it's got one for cubes, which goes almost all the way to the ground. One for tipped cones, which also rests all the way on the ground so it can hit the tip of, knock the tip of the cone up. And it has a third one for upright cones, where the top of the, where the, top of the cone will hit the top, top roller first. Well, I think that's a great transition to go into Hans and, and Annalise as well. To talk about the uh, lift and carriage area. We saw this moving up and down with such ease. I love that pivot motion that your team is bringing for that. So talk to me more about uh, how this all integrated and packaged in together for your team. Absolutely. So this is one of the biggest challenges for this game, and we definitely spent a lot of time thinking about how we wanted to do this. Originally, we didn't have these IGIS rails in here, which helped guide this lift. If you can see, this is a single-stage, continuous rigged lift. Um, so it's open top which means it's very loose up here. So we actually have these steel stays on the side, which we welded in here and added so we can adjust the parallelism up here. So it's a continuous smooth motion all the way from the bottom up to the top. What's really cool about this design is allow us to score in every single position as well as pick up every single position, both game pieces. So we're really ready to play everything we would want to. When you were looking at uh, different types of lifts on here, uh, what our testing did you do to figure out this was the right lift for you to go with? Uh, we did a lot of research, especially in CAD. We did a lot of modeling with different lines and um, patterns to figure out what would work. And we found that something like this would be able to uh, score and pick up in every single position. The hardest part about this was keeping it structurally sturdy, which is why we had to do all these iterations with the IGUS rails and steel stays. Uh, speaking about uh, on, on this here, uh, how did you end up coming up with like different positions uh, for your robot and sort of thing? What kind of programming went into that? 
a lot of programming and a lot of testing. The cool thing about this robot is we got it done extremely quickly. So we had about two to three weeks of just straight auto and driver practice where we were able to fine tune everything here. On the operator controls, we uh, actually have a control mechanism to allow us to adjust the pickup and scoring positions um, in each match in case something goes wrong. But a lot of just practice and testing. I don't know, Lisa, talk to me about uh, on this uh, lift here, uh, from your uh, perspective coming in, uh, why was this lift the, the right one for your team? And then is there anything else you want to add from a functionality or programming side too? So a uh, continuous lift, uh, make sure that all the stage extends at once, sorry, one at a time. Um, so we can uh, lock in the top carriage at the top while we're extending the next stage. Um, and to make sure our uh, moving stage stays down while the carriage is still extending, we have both constant force springs and magnets to provide additional force to keep it down. Uh, we also have a gearbox where each side of our lift is synchronized to keep it from binding while it's extending. Talk, about, uh, talk a little bit more about the magnets. So we haven't seen too many teams use that before. Uh, how has that worked out for you? What advice do you have for other teams? So we originally just had the constant force springs and it uh, wasn't providing enough force to keep the moving stage down. Um, so we tried bigger ones, still wasn't quite enough force. Um, so the magnets provide um, enough force just when the moving stage is down and not while it's still extending. Um, so it provides the force just at the right time and not any time else. As we start to uh, wrap up on this row, if we go to 112, uh, Jack, talk to me more about, uh, you guys are our team rep, uh, so love to hear more about the, uh, a little bit more about the swerve, how that's worked out for your team, and anything else that you want to cover? I know you got some driver feedback on your electronics too. Yeah, of course. Uh, we have been a huge fan of the rev swerve modules. Not only are they sleek and elegant and work mechanically well, but they also offer the functionality of being able to be swapped quickly. Uh, we saw uh, matches, we got 15 minutes, we can swap a swerve module thanks to the new design. Uh, we also have SparkMax brackets on there, so we have our speed controllers really close uh, to those motors there, which allow us to swap uh, those out quickly as well. Additionally, as can be seen there, uh, we have those LEDs. Uh, this allows for driver feedback and for human player signaling. So if Ryan were to switch over to cube mode, we go with the uh, purple cube mode there. Uh, and this just allows the human player to know, but it as well uh, sets the presets for the gripper and the lift so that that is automatically all done in one button on the operator controller. This means that the driver can focus on uh, when we're going to score and the operator can focus on where we're going to score. So they control uh, low, mid, or high scoring where the driver will control when we're scoring and all the actual moving of the mechanism. Well, we heard a lot about 111s for a while. We told you we're going to showcase two fantastic robots here. Let's over to Team uh, 112 uh, Plus One and check out more about their robot as well, too. So, uh, Ronnie here, uh, 112 is built also a gorgeous robot. I love to hear uh, how 112 approaches the game, especially in comparison to like 111. Do you work together? Is it a totally separate experience? And then let's talk more about uh, some of the features of like your claw intake as well. Yeah, so we actually are completely separate from 111. We do our prototyping separate. We do our designing separate. Um, so that's why they look completely different yeah. this year. Obviously, I mean, we have our intake and our gripper, and then they have their arm. So, yeah, we do it uh, separate. We do our building. We do our everything separate. We just share a space, and we share sure. some mentors. That's yeah. really cool. I, I actually love to hear that. You, you're able to go your ways, and it's almost, it is two different teams, right? And right. then you're just in the same build space sort of thing. That's really cool. Talk to me about the uh, gripper you have on your robot here. Uh, love to see uh, more about just kind of uh, – uh, this type of compliance you're using with it, uh, how it's been working out for your team, and uh, how did you end up coming up with this design? Yeah, so we actually looked at a whole bunch of different designs. We looked at a horizontal, or this is obviously a horizontal claw. We looked at a vertical claw. We looked at, um, you know, a lot of different things. We ended up with this just because we felt like it worked the best for our game strategy because um, what we wanted to accomplish with our robot. We felt like this worked the best. Uh, we use the pistons to obviously open and close the gripper. And we originally ran into the problem where we would put the cube in. Oh, close, close it, close it, close it. And when we would open it, it wouldn't fall out um, because our arm or our claw didn't open up fully. Sure. So we actually completely redid our design for the claw 
to open up complete or open up much further, so it, the cube will actually fall out. Before we move on, I, I got to ask you here. You're a team rep team, but I also see repping uh, Annie Mark here with the goat yeah. as well too. So are, are you team rep? Are you Annie Mark? What's going on here? One of our mentors just gave this to us. I thought he'd be a great addition. This is Grayson. I mean, many can play in one space, right? Nothing yeah. wrong with that uh, at all. Let's keep moving on your robot. Uh, Julia is going to talk as we keep following this robot uh, more and into the transfer area uh, and then beyond with the robot too. So talking about how that transfer process works and how it's working out for your team. So for the cubes, we use um, the intake that uh, the design we've uh, taken from uh, last year it pretty much mimics uh, the same, the design from last year. and. Um, there is a feed that's pretty fast. Uh, it's at an angle and it feeds right into the gripper, which um, has to be in the stowaway position in order to grab the cube. Um, as you can see, there is a um, pneumatic tank underneath, so, which is uh, why the um, feed had to be at an angle so that the cube wouldn't be too high entering the gripper. So for your team, when you were looking at uh, from a, a packaging standpoint and accomplishing objectives, uh, what made you choose to have a, a separate type of intake for like floor uh, versus the uh, the claw gripper here instead of kind of packaging it all in one? So when we were testing the gripper design um, with the cubes, like when it was originally like made out of wood, um, the cubes, when they tried entering the uh, gripper, they would um, shoot out in the opposite direction if uh, they only met one of the uh, rollers on like the side. And it was kind of finicky, so we just decided to uh, add in an intake to make things a bit easier. Let's keep moving on to your robot here. Talk to uh, Elliot, who's going to talk about your arm and your four-bar uh, as well. So uh, when we look in this robot, I love how compact this robot is overall. Uh, when you look at you know 112s versus 111 on here, not that you know it's it's a battle between the other two, but I really do love the packaging of this robot here. So talk to me about uh, how that arm's been working out for you and, and how it completes the process of scoring a game piece. Yeah, so the arm spins around and then it will drop it with the clock. You want to show that? And then we can score the cubes high as well as mid and uh, shared node. And then you can also score the cones mid. And we decided to go for a virtual four bar and one arm because we wanted to have a really simple robot that we could build really quickly. And then having this built allows us to do a lot of drive practice. So I noticed, I know you're on, on your platform. When that four bar came over, I did see a little bit of wobble on that. Do you have any CG issues on the field? And if so, have, how have you compensated for that? Yeah, so we have had CG issues on the field, and that's why we put in this two by one steel bar. And that allows us to move the arm and drive at the same time. And we really haven't had any issues with tipping after we put in that steel bar. Yeah, cool to hear they added ballast uh, as well, too. As we wrap up on this robot, uh, Landon, talk to me about more of the software that's gone into uh, this arm on here. Uh, do, you, do you do anything from uh, positional control, any automation or anything like that you can talk about? Um, yeah, so we have a set of presets that we use for scoring at all the different posi positions. Um, and the interesting thing is for our arm velocity, rather than having a set path that most teams use to get the arm into position, we have a program that calcul calculates the velocity on the fly to reduce error in SSE. Really cool. Can, can you kind of uh, talk about how that's working while the robot's moving and kind of narrate that for us a little bit? Yeah, so it helps um, so that usually uh, if you have a preset path, the arm will end up in a different posi position than you ex ex expect due to gravity. Um, but since we calculate it on the fly, we don't get as much of that error. Well, 112, absolutely looking phenomenal this year. We also have 111 uh, in this interview. Both these teams on Team Wallace we can't wait to see how they perform here. I, I have to admit, uh, as somebody, uh, when we see teams like this, I got to root for 112 to do a little bit better than 111 because I just think that's fun. But I can't wait to see how both these teams do here. So thank you so much, 112. Thank you so much, 111. And good luck here at the competition. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.